Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about the statement of cash flows. So what exactly is a statement of cash flow? Basically, a statement of cash flow reports the cash receipts, cash payments, and the net change in cash resulting from the operating, investing, and financing activities during the period. Take note that there are three main types of activities involved, which are operating, investing, and financing. These will be discussed more a bit later. So why are statement of cash flows important? It is mainly used to assess, first, the entity's ability to generate future cash flows, second, the entity's ability to pay dividends and meet obligations, third, the reasons for the differences between net income and net cash provided or used by operating activities, and lastly, the cash investing and financing transactions during the period. So basically, these show the changes in your assets and liabilities. There are two ways of presenting the statement of cash flows, which are the direct and indirect method. Basically, the main difference is that in direct method, you compute for the net cash flows from operating, investing, and financing activities, then add the beginning cash balance to get the ending cash balance for the period. The indirect method, on the other hand, is a more complex version of the direct method. It actually is very similar to the direct method, but instead of proceeding directly to computing for the net cash flows from operating activities, you begin with net income, then add and deduct certain adjustments. So direct method is definitely a lot simpler than the indirect method, so basic accounting students only need to focus on the direct method. The indirect method is actually taught in advanced accounting courses for BSA majors. So later I'm going to show you how to prepare your own statement of cash flows. As I said before, there are three main categories shown in the direct form of the statement of cash flows, namely the operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Now I'm going to discuss how to categorize transactions. Operating activities include transactions reflected in the income statement. These include transactions which are a part of normal business operations. So in classifying items, ask yourself, does this transaction appear on the income statement, which means is it related to revenues or expenses? And also ask yourself if it is a part of your normal business operations. Does it happen on a routine basis to keep the business running? For example, sales or purchases of supplies and inventories or payment of bills. Some examples of cash receipts from operating activities would include collections from customers for sales of goods and services, your interest and dividends received, and other receipts from operations such as proceeds from settlement of litigation. Cash payments would include payment to suppliers for merchandise and services, payments of interest, payments of income taxes, and other expenditures relating to operations. Take note that interest payments and collections are part of operating activities and not financing. Also remember that collections for notes receivable and payments for notes payable are part of operating activities. This is because if you think about it, notes receivables may have been issued by customers for your sales. In that sense, it could be considered as collections from customers. Notes payable, on the other hand, may be seen as payments perhaps to suppliers for purchases. However, do take note that if the note payable is for a bank loan, it would fall under financing activities. Next, we have investing activities, which include transactions relating to non-current assets, such as property, plant, and equipment, intangible assets, and investments. However, in basic accounting, your focus should only be on property, plant, and equipment. So cash receipts from investing activities would include cash proceeds from selling investments and plant assets or cash proceeds from collecting the principal amount on loans. Cash payments, on the other hand, would include payments to acquire investments and plant assets or amounts advanced to borrowers. Lastly, we have the financing activities, which result typically from debt and capital or equity transactions. You have your investments and drawing accounts and bank loans. 
So financing activities usually have proceeds from both short-term and long-term borrowing as well as cash received from owners as cash receipts. Cash payments for financing activities include repayment of amounts borrowed and, re and payments to owners such as cash withdrawals. Repayment of amounts borrowed refers to repayment of loans and not to payments made on accounts payable or accrued liabilities. Payments of accounts payable and accrued liabilities are actually considered as payments to suppliers and therefore classified as operating activities. Again, all interest payments are classified as operating activities. So now that you know how to categorize the transactions, you are all ready to prepare your own statement of cash flows. So here is a sample of the statement. You first start with the heading, and most students will forget to put this. So you need to put this or it might cost you one or two points in the exam. So first, you put the company name and the type of statement prepared, which in this case is the statement of cash flows, then the date for the period ended December 31, 2014. Remember that we are accounting for transactions that occurred throughout a whole period, from day one to the date of the cash flow statement. That is why we use the term for the period ended. The same goes for the income statement and the statement of changes of owner's equity. We are trying to trace the changes in transactions during a whole period. Compare this with the statement of financial position where we used as of. Since we are only presenting the condition of the company during a point in time. So it's as if you're telling your users that the company at that point in time during that day has how many assets, liabilities, or equity. So you guys have to be careful about that difference. Again, the statement of financial position is presented as of a certain date, while the statement of cash flows, the income statement, and the statement of changes in owner's equity are all presented for the period ended. Also remember that the date does not always have to fall on December 31. Fiscal years, which are the years that don't end on December 31, would end on different dates, perhaps like April 30 or January 31, depending on the problem. So after that, you have the net cash flows from operating activities. You first list down all the inflows that you have determined, get the total, then list down all the, outf all the outflows, and then get the total. Get the difference between the two, to get the net cash flows from operating activities. And then you do the same thing for investing and financing activities. And then you get the total sum or difference to get the net cash flows from the three activities for the period. At the beginning cash balance, which is usually but not always January 1, to get the ending cash balance, which is again usually but not always for December 31. And there you have it, your very own statement of cash flows. Hope you guys learned something.